So we're in Barcelona for MWC 22. I'm here with Neil McRae, Chief Architect at BT Group. Neil, great to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Ray, it's great to see you in, 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 in the flesh, in person. It's fantastic. It's incredible how many people have said that to me this week, that uh, I do You've actually exist. You've never felt exist. so popular <laughs> in all of your life. And that is actually true. <laughs> No, genuinely, it's great, to, it's great to see you. It's great to be at this event and to see, I don't know, I guess the other 50,000 people that are here really, yeah, really pleased to have come out. Yeah. So you've had a bit of time to have meetings, go around the show floor. What's exciting or agitating you at MWC this year? Uh, what's exciting is I went down to the Startups Pavilion and the number of startups around 5G and interest in 5G use cases is, is an, it's insane down there. The vibe is, it's, like a, it's almost like a party, but it's just real people trying to do deals and partner and work with each other. And there's a couple of British companies down there, which is great to see as well. Um, it's really exciting down there. I was, I, quite often I don't make it down there. A couple of times I've not made it down there, but in the future I'm gonna focus on that because get some ideas, get some new contacts. So that's really excited me. What's agitated me, I don't know if anything's really agitated me. Um, other, other than- It is other, you, Neil, uh, isn't Yeah, it? Is other, it than, other than the taxi rang last night. But um, no, I mean, I, I, I think um, a bit of focus on, a bit over-focused on some of the usual topics, um, you know, where I, you know, not enough use of the word customer that always agitates me and customers are why we're here right so you know i, I have conversations and you know the, they start talking about customers 15 minutes in whereas i want to talk about customers 15 seconds in so right i think we we always need to be customer focused more and more and more in our industry um and, and sometimes that, that agitates me. But um, I actually think this has been one of the best MWCs in terms of who's here, the content, the, the, the scale of it. It's, it's actually a manageable event to get around. Um, and, you know, the sunshine here in Barcelona, the weather's great. And, and it's really good to see, you know, those that are really passionate about connectivity have made the effort to get here. Because it was, you know, we were, remember we were talking, are we going, are we not? No one yeah, was quite yeah. sure, but I think the GSMA have done a tremendous job in, you know, putting on an event that's safe, secure, exciting. Uh, it's got a lot of great speakers and a lot of great people here. What's, yeah. what's, more, what's more, more to like? Absolutely, and a very positive vibe. I think uh, pe 100%. people are happy to be here for sure. 100%. So as BT's chief architect, what is the main focus for you this year in 2022? What is the McRae milestone? Uh, good question, Ray. And, and actually, we've, we've been working on, on what our goals are for next year. I think for me, number one goal is that we keep our customers engaged and plugged into the number one network that we have. We've got a lot going on as we swap out you know, some of the core parts of Huawei and move to Nokia and Ericsson as, as, as we've been uh, requested to do. Um, the great news is and uh, you know, we've done you know, more than a couple of thousand base stations already. Um, the quality of our network hasn't changed. In fact, in some places it's got even better. Uh, you know, we, we won all the kind of number one network awards, even despite the fact that we're having to do a big swap out program. And, you know, the, the team under uh, my colleague Greg McCall have done an outstanding job um, in doing that. Very difficult, very, very time consuming, um, but we're still the leader and we're still really focused on making sure the network gives customers what they need and what they want. So that's probably number one. Number two, is taking the RIC and, and really getting that embedded and built out and deployed so that we can start to test some of these exciting use cases, one around customer experience and, and taking that even further than, than, than where we are today. The second is around um, network slicing. So if you remember when we started talking about 5G five years ago, slicing was the big thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, it kind of went quiet and, and now the network's got to a maturity level where slicing is, is, is starting to become available and we've got enough 5G deployed that it makes, starts to make sense. Starting to see some really interesting use cases on slicing around changing the engagement with customers from one that's all about cost to one that's about value and offering customers more where they need it. 
um, you know, perhaps offering an enterprise service where they can boost the bandwidth on their phone for a short period of time, but really getting slicing to, to give us much more interesting conversations with customers about what they can do with their network. And coming out of COVID, there is this, I think there, we do detect a change from, you know, value and being the network being more valuable and, and something that customers want to think more carefully about and ensuring they've got the right solution. So that's what you're looking to deliver to your customers uh, during the course of this year, but what do you want from your peers and your partners in the industry? What, what are you looking for that you haven't got right now? I don't know if I've not got what I want, Ray. I think I would say I want more of it. I'm, I'm a pretty uncompromising person. In fact, in fact many of people in my team will say, Neil McRae, don't ever use the word compromise, Neil McRae. So I, I think what I want is much more collaboration much more blue sky thinking, much more experimentation, much more um, outcome focused rather than in technology, we often get religion about our technology and, we, and I think we've got a little bit of that in some of our technology right now. So really let's focus on what can we deliver for the customer? How do we really step back into the networkification being the thing that people are talking about rather than the cloud all the time? Because you know, we, we hear about cloud and cloud this and cloud that, and, and look, the cloud is a fantastic thing, but we are making the cloud real by connecting people to it and giving them that, you know, wherever they are, ability to do what they need to do. And I think we need to kind of step up our game in, in our part that we play in that and ensure that our customers recognize the value that we're bringing and that the cloud partners recognize the value that we're bringing. Um, but this year with 5G, as we go into standalone and you know, we'll be launching standalone sometime this year, um, getting those 5G enterprise use cases is all about collaboration, it's all about partnership. And, and what I hope it's not about is compromise. I want us to really stretch what we can do for our customers. Now something that uh, seems to be on the, the, the minds of every operator right now is how to improve energy efficiency in their networks, especially as they start to like really push on with 5G to the next stage and start to build out broader and denser broadband networks. Are there any particular tools or products or processes that are helping you to improve energy efficiency in what you do? Um, so we've been looking at kind of sustainability around energy and energy usage for you know, years, actually years before I, I was at BT, we started our, our sustainability program back in 1992 in BT, which, you know, is, is, is amazing when you think about where we are now. We've been using renewable energy uh, for some time. We've got, we pulled forward our targets to, to be carbon neutral. And with that, we're looking at how do we, how do we optimize the product cycle for the, the things in our network so that as we put them in, we're thinking more about how we take them out. And, and, and taking a lead from the car manufacturers, you know, there's not a car that's made today that's got as much thought into how you dispose of it as how you build it. And, and we're, we're kind of learning from that about actually in the network, we're doing this and this. Okay, when, when we take it out, how are we going to, how are we going to cope with that? Um, and, and then also working with, uh, you know, some of our own internal AI and c capability about which part of the networks are using the most power and actually can we turn them down, can we, can we, can we slow down what they're doing in order um, to reduce and save power? Can we use some of the technology in, in the RIC? Again, I mentioned this earlier on, we think that there's, there's technology the RIC could bring where we could start powering down you know, a motorway at three in the morning you know, not turn it off entirely, but we don't need five carriers of spectrum, or we don't need some of the features, so how can we turn that down uh, so that we, we, we use less energy? And then also, you know, we've, we've, we've done a lot of work in, in solar and, and understanding how solar might help the network, um, how battery technology might help the network in, in BT Labs with Tim Whitley's team. How can we continue to, to do that research? Not that we probably want to build anything, but it helps us work with our partners to say, actually, let's think about this from an energy perspective. We're really excited about Nokia's announcement of a water-cooled base station. That could present some really interesting um, opportunities, probably some challenges as well. Um, but it's great to see them 
working in a way that's, you know, they're trying something different. Um, and if, and if, if you're a hardcore gamer like me, we've been using water cooling in our PCs for years to cool them and get the most out of, out of our, our gaming rigs. So that's a really exciting development that I think we've probably just scratched the surface on with, with much more to come. So yeah, definitely. I mean, there's an awful lot of innovation going on in this space now and really good to see it. And some of it here at MWC, of course. Um, and of course, we're in Barcelona. People come to the show, but they like to enjoy the delights of what the city has to offer. Um, when you're out in the evening, what is your go-to choice off the tapas menu and what you have? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I'm on, on the cerveza, the, the they're just that beer is just I could drink that all night, um, and I'm not a big beer drinker, honestly. Um, it's got to be patatas bravas, right? It's 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 the staple of of many Brit abroad. Um, you know, you, 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 I'm not the most ex adventurous eater, but when I see that, it's like hallelujah. I've, there's something I can I can eat, and it's got so much carbs on it, you can live off it for a week. So. Um, it's, it's great. I mean, the, the, you know, the restaurants and the people here are so friendly and accommodating um, and hard working. They, they, they put on a great show. So, um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's really good to see that tapas and the, the food. Even here at the show, they've, they've had a couple of great, um, a couple of events I was at where, the, where the, the, whole, the whole experience is just fantastic. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's my staple, I'm afraid. Absolutely, and why not? I'm sure we'll be enjoying some of that later on for sure. I hope so. Neil, great to see you. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thanks, Ray. Good to see you.